story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. Like other great cities, it is home to all kinds of schools where you can get most any kind of education. There are universities, high schools, grade schools. Some students take the problem of earning a living. They enroll in a trade school. Some learn to cut hair or how to give a permanent. Still others try their hand at fashion modeling, at nursing, or taking shorthand. They learn how to be bartenders, dentists, actors, how to drive a car, or how to give a massage, how to be a tailor, a wrestler, a chiropractor, or how to be a clerk in a supermarket. All these schools are accredited. There's one that is not. It holds its classes in the cracks and crevices of the city. Because of it, I have a job. I carry a badge. It was Wednesday, December 17th. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We'd received a call from an unknown informant who claimed he had information about a series of burglaries. He refused to give us any details. He even refused to give us his name. He said he'd contact us at his own convenience. We waited. Lieutenant Friday. I am? Is there something I can do for you? I talked to you on the telephone before. I finally decided to come and talk to you. What was that name? I didn't give you any name. I told you I knew about some things that were stolen. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that call. Sit down. Thank you. I finally made up my mind it would be best to come in and talk to you. I want to do what's right. Could we have your name, please? Yeah. You can have it. Hovick. Hovick. Oscar Hovick. <laughs> I know that's kind of a hard one to spell. It's Norwegian. I've figured out a way to change the spelling, but I haven't got around to it yet. H-O-V-E-J-G. You spell the Oscar with a K. Uh-huh. All right. What did you come in to tell us, Mr. Hovig? Well, if I show you something that I think is stolen, have you got some way to find out who it got stolen from? Yes, sir, we might, if the theft was reported to us. Uh, I don't know anything about that part. This is all I know. I hope I'm doing the right thing. You think those are stolen? Is that it, Mr. Hovey? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. I guess you fellas can find out. The initials are EF. Why do you think they're stolen? Well, I just do, that's all. Where'd you get them? Well, I found it. Where'd you find it? I'll show you where. Don't worry. I'll show you. But in my own good time. Is this all you found? Mm. I should say not. That's just a sample. I thought you could use it for identification. That's all I want to say just now. Please. All right, Frank. You want to check stolen property files, see if you can come up with a make? Yeah, sure. Mr. Hovig. Yes? What makes you think that that's stolen property? I don't think it is, Lieutenant. I know it is. How do you know? I can't tell you now. I just know it's stolen. You'll know it too when you see the other stuff. Well, all right, who's responsible for it, do you know? Yes, I know. Well, who is it? Well, maybe later on I'll tell you. Maybe not. I continued to question Mr. Hovig, but I couldn't pry loose any additional information that might help us. 
Frank found an identification in stolen property covering the articles Mr. Hovig had shown us. The silverware matched the description of that taken in a theft four days previously. It's all right here in the report. All right, Mr. Hovig. Apparently you're right about this being stolen property. Now you say there are some other items? Yeah. That's what I said. Can you recall any of them? Well, I didn't look them over real good. Let's see. There are a couple of ladies' fans. Ivory? Yeah. And all this silver. It's wrapped in some lace thing. Where is it? Well, it's right where I found it. I didn't move it an inch. Not an inch. Where did you find it? You come to my house. You meet me at my house at one o'clock, I'll show it to you. I didn't move it an inch. Well, can't you tell us where it is and leave the rest to us? No. No, it must be done my way. You see, I want to be sure. It still might be some mistake. All right, we'll do it your way. What's that address? 1307 North Camrose. It's in Hollywood, just below Gower. We'll find it. This is very important. Don't come before one o'clock and you've got to be all through by two. It's very important. We'll do our best. And don't you forget it. My name doesn't get mentioned. Well, we've worked some strange ones, but this is shaping up a real winner, isn't it? Yep, and it's getting stranger all the time. What do you mean by that? This theft report the victim filed. Listen to this. I insist that in the event of my property described above being recovered, that the police inform me first before giving out news of same to any newspaper or broadcasting station. Signed, Elma Face. Elma Face? How do you spell that? F-A-C-E. You don't suppose that's a real name? Oh, man, that's got to be. Huh? Nobody could come up with an alias like that. Frank and I decided to drop by and talk to Mrs. Face before we met Mr. Hovick at his home. Just a minute. One minute. Yes? What is it? Mrs. Face? Of course. Who did you think? Yes. Well, we're police officers. Police? Oh, great, great. Come in. Come in. Well, part of it, anyway. Oh, good Lord. Can you identify this, ma'am? Oh, yes, of course. It's mine. Oh, sit down, sit down. And a personal interview with the police to boot. Well, sit down. You don't understand. We can only stay a minute. Please. I ask you to sit down. All right. I just want to jot down a few notes. It won't take but a jiffy. Now, Mrs. Face, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Now, let's see. My notebook is here someplace. I keep thinking I should tidy up a bit, but it, it would just get messed up again, so what's the use? Oh, some of my very best thoughts are in here someplace. You know how writers are. And it would be such a shame. Do you know Tom Carlyle? What divisions do you work out of, ma'am? Oh, no, no. He was a very famous author. He wrote uh, The French Revolution about a hundred years ago. And guess what happened to his very first volume? Millions of words. A cleaning woman came into the room and threw them all away. Burned them all up. And when she was asked why she did it, do you know what she said? She said she thought the paper was just no good anymore because it had already been written on. <laughs> oh, dear, that's... Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. Let's have it, men. Let's have it. We go to press tonight. Well, I'm afraid we can't give you a complete story yet, Mrs. Face. What do you mean? What in the world do you mean? Now, if anybody scoops me, it's going to be me, you understand? You've got the stuff. That's my silver spoon, and you've got the guy. So why shouldn't I get my own story? I am waiting for your answer. And don't forget, I can make this sound real bad if I feel like it. All we have is a lead. We haven't picked up the thief yet. We haven't recovered all of your property. Now, we should know more about it in an hour or so. Oh, Th that's the way it is, huh? Yes, ma'am, that's the way. Well, where did you get that spoon? From a man who claims that he found it. Where did he find it? Well, he hasn't told us yet. We're going to meet with him in a little while. Aha! Uh -huh. 
You're going to have a rendezvous with him. Is that the idea? Yes, ma'am. A rendezvous. I'm going with you. I can, can't I? No, I'm afraid you can't. Then tell me this, Sam Spade. Where does this guy live? I'm afraid we can't tell you that either. What are you anyway? Men of mystery? If you can't tell me anything, why are you here? Well, we'd like to ask you a few questions, if it's all right. All right, then. Shoot. We have your report. We thought you might remember some of the details. I didn't tell anything in that report. I didn't tell any lies, mind you. I just boiled it all down. I said that this box of stuff was stolen from my car. But I didn't say I saw the whole thing. You saw the theft, did you? Sure. What did you think? My eyes are open, Mr. Wide Open. You see, I moved in here last week with my girlfriend. Her name is Rose, and we call her Gypsy. I'm divorced, thank goodness. Oh, yes. Anyway, while we were moving in, I looked out of that window there, and I saw this guy carrying a box across the lawn. My box, my silver, my heart. Your heart? It stopped. When I saw him, I mean. Can you describe the thief for us? Oh, well... Not so it would help you much. I only saw him from the back. And he was bent over, lugging my silver away. And I was going to rush out after him, but by the time I got outside, he was in his car and going. Well, now, can you remember anything about him that might help us? He was a tall, big man. Even bent over a bit, carrying that box, I could tell that. I was a bit upset, you understand, but I did notice something that might help you. Well, what was that? He threw a glove out of the window of his car. A glove? That's right. This one. Oh, just threw it out, you know. And there was an L in the license number. And the color of the car was green. Why didn't you put all of this in your report? I told you. I didn't want to get scooped. I want it in my paper first. Now, that shouldn't be hard to understand. Well, just what paper do you write for? This one. The Southwest Record? It's a throwaway. I am the editor of this sheet, and don't call it a throwaway. It's a shopper's weekly. So you didn't want any other paper to print the story before you did, is that it? That is what I keep telling you, man. And you haven't printed your story yet? No, sirree. Not a single word of it. You know, on second thought, it might be a good idea for you to be with us when we have our meeting this afternoon. Fine, fine. When? One o'clock. Good. That'll give me time to change. Where shall I meet you? The address is 1307 North Camrose. 1307. I'll be there. Oh, say, in case I have to ask, what's your name? Joe Friday. Uh, Friday. Friday? <laughs> oh, that's a funny name. Yes, sir. I guess it is, Mrs. Face. <laughs>